I'm Lorena Rivero. I am from the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency. I am a managing the collaboration and cooperation between countries, and therefore this this experience is very important for us to be shared. We have two very very active people here in in publishing information. Um, we have first of all, a, and I'm going with with female first, Anna Valenchuk. A, our dear a division chief of budget analysis and development from a, the Russian Federation. They have worked a lot in how to go further in establishing a better communication through a teaching how to understand the budget. She is going to tell you about this. And we have Wawan here, a head of subdirectorate of data and technical support from the Ministry of Finance of Indonesia. They have published a, a website with a lot of information to make it more accessible for people to understand the budget. Why is this so important? We have been working on how to uh, get in touch with these elusive users of the fiscal information that we are publishing, which is a challenge and not just for, for one country, but it's something that we find in most of our interactions with the different ministries of finance. So initiatives have gone from uh, publishing what you have and the users will come and a change in focus in publishing with purpose and understanding the user. How do we approach these uh, these people that might have and might not have the knowledge that we have in the ministries of finance of how to understand the budget and how to make a better interaction between citizen and ministries of finance. So first of all, I'm going to leave you with Anna and her presentation. She's gonna have around a 10, 15 minutes to present here their initiative on budget literacy. So uh, uh, we're making you a presenter right now. And thank you for sharing your experience. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, my name is uh, Anna Bilinchuk, and I'm a head of the unit of uh, budget system analysis and development of the Ministry of Finance of Russia. And uh, from uh, 2013 to uh, 2015, I was also a head um, of a special unit of development of budget openness in the Ministry of Finance. And it was a period when uh, there was an open government department uh, in the structure of Russian government. And there was even a separate minister of open government in Russia. Uh, also, I'm a chair of the executive committee of the budget community of practice of PMPAL program. Uh, PMPAL means uh, public expenditure management peer assisted learning, and it is an international program of uh, joint uh, training for ministries of finance employees in public finance management in Europe and uh, in Central Asia countries, and it is implemented as a World Bank project. Uh, within the um, budget community of Texas, uh, we have formed a special working group on budget literacy and budget transparency, which unites uh, 17 countries. Um, <clears throat> and you can visit um, the official site of Temple program uh, for more detailed uh, information about uh, activity. Um, as a leader of a working group on uh, budget uh, literacy and transparency of temple countries, I can say that um, our countries have a good experience in budget openness. Uh, most of them have open budget uh, principles in their budget legislation and use various tools of uh, openness and engaging citizens to express their opinions about the budget. And the most popular uh, instruments are, uh, first of all, is uh, public hearings on the draft budget or performance report, including parliamentary budget hearings. Uh, the second one, is, which is uh, very popular, is organizing and supporting the activities of public councils uh, under government uh, bodies. Uh, that includes um, representatives of civil society, experts, and famous professionals uh, in this field. And also, um, open budget portals are very popular in temple countries. But I think everybody knows how it works uh, promoting budget openness and even uh, citizens engagement. Um, as I have uh, about um, 10 minutes of time today, I will uh, present the most interesting from the Russian case um, of communicating the budget. 
and how we promote the use of budget information in Russia. Uh, according to the International Monetary Fund, the Russian Federation has made a great uh, strides in improving budget disclosure over the past 15 years. Mm. And uh, in 2013, we developed a new budget reform program in Russia uh, for the period up to 2018. Uh, the main goal of which was to increase the efficiency of budget spending at all levels uh, of the government. Uh, it quickly became uh, clear that the openness of uh, budget data and uh, budget procedures plays a very important role in increasing the efficiency of uh, budget expenditure. Uh, but in order to work effectively in uh, this area, it was important not only to publish uh, budget data, uh, but also to work uh, out all possible uh, options for the practical use of budget data. Uh, so we made a three vector model of the development of fiscal openness uh, in Russia uh, consists from uh, the first one is transparency of key budget uh, documents across all budget levels. Uh, the second one is budget literacy. And the third one is uh, public engagement in the budget process. Uh, thus, uh, the openness of the budget itself uh, was no longer uh, the final goal of our work, but only a um, requirement uh, for ensuring the effective management of budget information. And the logic uh, that we follow implies the active improvement of budget decision making, uh, stimulating demand uh, for the practical use of open budget data. And this approach for citizens. Uh, to understand the problems um, of budget policy of different levels of government uh, cannot be done without increasing budget literacy. Uh, it can be said that uh, budget literacy is the heart of the project, its engine, uh, because from understanding uh, where, um, from understanding, uh, budget understanding, there will be confidence and um, the desire to participate in project of uh, participatory budgeting maybe even co-financing this uh, project uh, in order to solve some problems that were not priority for municipal uh, budgets before. Um, also, budget literacy is uh, the key to what we call budget responsibility, that is um, the citizen's awareness of uh, his role and rights uh, to participate in budget decisions, uh, the implementation of uh, public control uh, over budget spending. Uh, citizen budget in Russia means more than just publishing explanatory brochures to the budget law. Uh, this is the name of the Ministry of Finance, this project, including the Ministry of Finance Working Group, to promote the citizen budget and some joint projects with the World Bank assistance. Uh, because activities were organized as a project, it allowed uh, to bring together federal and regional uh, government officials as well as independent experts who engaged uh, in the implementation of the comprehensive action plan uh, across the following areas. Uh, so the first one is drafting and improving the citizen's budget methodology for all budget levels, and we need it. Uh, the second one is developing approaches to disclosing key provisions of the federal budget in a clear form. Uh, means that uh, we differ the budget data from different target groups students, pensioners, and etc. Uh, the third one is uh, putting in place incentives um, for regional authorities to enhance transparency and clarity of budget data. Uh, for example, we have a regional rating of budget openness. The fourth one is uh, promoting and encouraging public demand for open budget data through citizens' budget contests once a year. And the fifth one is uh, making broader use of the data in clear way means that Ministry of Finance advises regional and municipal authorities to use citizen budget uh, for public hearings. On this slide, we can see the progress in uh, promoting participatory budgeting in Russia. And in uh, 2018, um, nearly uh, 51 regions of Russia were already involved in the development of participatory budgeting. According to the responses of the executive authorities of the regions um, to the request of the Ministry of Finance, over the past year, projects uh, selected uh, with the participation of uh, citizens cost 14.5 um, billion rubles. And there is an increase of uh, 
times compared with 2016. The expenditures of the budgets of the regions um, are estimated at 7.7 .7 billion rubles. And for financing by the population and uh, business is about 1 billion rubles. And the total number of projects reached uh, about 16,000 a year. Um, also achieved in the development of the participatory practices themselves, which are distinguished uh, by uh, their diversity in the Russian uh, region. At the uh, present time, there are 112 different practices of citizen participation in budget decisions at regional and municipal levels. Uh, the experience of organizing participatory budgeting in each region of Russia is individual. Uh, some regions uh, continue to increase and develop uh, the only flagship practice uh, at the regional level, and um, some of them um, have a complex of various practices. Um, new participatory budgeting practices are being introduced uh, both at regional and at the municipal levels. Uh, and one of the recent examples uh, of the emergence of new practices is the experience of our Sakhalin region. Uh, which uh, in 2017 introduced a youth budget and starting from this year a new practice of social development of territories based on the Portuguese model of participatory budgeting. Of course, uh, behind uh, the indicators of the rapid growth of participatory budgeting practices, there is the consistent methodological work of all participants of this process over uh, the past few years. Uh, the Center of Participatory budgeting which, budgeting, which we have under the Research Financial Institute, uh, carries out regular educational activities on the topic of participatory budgeting and the, the dissemination of best practices uh, between regions. And also, many of the regions have succeeded uh, their success in developing uh, citizen participation in budget decisions uh, due to participation in the federal project of the Ministry of Finance of Russia on the development of participatory budgeting uh, implemented in cooperation with the World Bank. Uh, the project's activities are aimed uh, at facilitating the launch, uh, the launch uh, and implementation of regional participatory budgeting programs, developing the capacity of uh, regional project centers, creating an effective information uh, environment uh, for sharing experience and creating a community of participatory budgeting experts and practitioners. And as a part of the project, in 2017, 19 events were held uh, for the regions uh, with the participation of over uh, 1,300 people. With a uh, view to foster um, a responsible civic stance uh, through understanding of the functions of the government and motivating uh, youth to actively engage in the budget process, the Ministry of Finance, in conjunction with the World Bank, also launched a budget literacy project in 2015. Under the project, teaching materials were developed for the high school budget literacy curriculum, uh, including full textbooks, a textbook uh, for students, a student's workbook, a guidebook for teachers, and a manual for parents. And the project is uh, structured around uh, three pillars. The first one is how much and what are we paying for. Uh, the second is what are we getting from our tax money. And the third one is uh, how can we influence on budget. And these questions studied in the framework of the budget literacy uh, are very close to the problems of participatory budgeting, uh, which covers a uh, wider audience of the adult population. And it would seem uh, that integrating budget literacy and participatory budgeting is quite simple, but it's not. Uh, for example, in the participatory budgeting, educational goals are not set directly. Um, the growth of citizens' awareness uh, actually appears uh, due to the fact that they participate in meetings uh, to discuss budget expenditures, uh, become familiar with uh, the structure of uh, the budget process, key stages and mechanisms for making budget decisions. And given the, this, um, uh, one of our latest innovations uh, is the idea of integration of two areas of the citizens' uh, budget pro project. 
uh, participatory budgeting and budget literacy. And one of the results of this um, work was the draft roadmap of integrating these two areas presented on the slide. And uh, the implementation is uh, the implementation of this uh, roadmap will uh, be greatly assisted by the successful experience that we have of holding uh, regional uh, seminars, training events, and conferences accumulated in the framework um, of the Joint uh, World Bank and Ministry of Finance project on the development of participatory budgeting. Uh, in this regard, uh, budget literacy is considered now in the, and in the future as one of the directions for the development of participatory budgeting. Uh, thank you for your attention. So as we can see, they have been very active in this uh, part of enhancing openness, because I'm not going to say only uh, transparency, but openness in a complete sense. And something that I think we should um, take very much into account and recuperate from what they're doing is this building blocks that goes from data transparency, budget literacy, and then citizen engagement. So not trying to achieve one bef before the other, but it's some building blocks to achieve a, a better engagement with the citizens. I think this is something great that we can learn from this experience. And please, any questions that you have? I'm going to, uh, I would like to make some one question uh, to open the, the floor for the questions here. And I'm going to give you more, uh, more time for questions in the end after one one. But I would like, Anna to share with us a bit more of how you do this uh, citizen budget competition. How does it work? So we have a special contest uh, in all competition on citizen budget and it has a regional part uh, and the federal part. So uh, the regions they itself, themselves um, organize uh, this contest and the best works uh, from this regional contest, uh, they are um, put it uh, in the federal part of the uh, citizens budget project. Uh, so, and after that, um, uh, the projects uh, which are winners of the contest, uh, they are put it in our official materials and the Minister of Finance um, awarded uh, the winners of this contest. That is great. and. I'm going to leave some questions for the end, but I, so now we're going to give the floor to, to our friends from Indonesia who have also worked so much in a, making budget information accessible to the users. Uh, for the first time, thank you for uh, the opportunity to join this webinar. Uh, sorry, uh, in the screen still appear Krishna. My name is Wawan. Uh, I want to, uh, tell about the experience of Indonesian budget, and we call it uh, budget in letter uh, slide is APBN. Uh, we already have uh, eight uh, document, eight document that uh, consider to the, uh, the what's called uh, the suffrage of uh, transparency. Uh, before maybe before 2010, uh, it's still uh, like a, a holy a document or secret document. Not people can easily uh, take uh, the information and etc. So uh, after the financial reform uh, on budget law in 2003, uh, we have uh, put we put it into our web, but still in PDF format. Uh, people usually want to all about information about the budget, usually uh, on government expenditure, because uh, most likely uh, they uh, want to know about how much uh, government spend on the road, on the health sector, and etc. Uh, how we disseminate to uh, the people? We have a lot of uh, a uh, lot of uh, media. Before we have uh, a lot of uh, type uh, to disseminate, usually we just put it into uh, newspaper or uh, maybe on just press conference. 
But recently we have economic forum, we have a forum group discussion. Usually we help in universities or schools in several cities around Indonesia. We also have a budget goes to campus and also uh, we call it KJ Amenyapa, greeting for budget for high school level. We, I, I can call it that uh, budget to campus and DJ Amenyapa is still, we, we can call it like a budget literacy for student, even in a university or at a high school. We also have an open class for lecturer uh, to disseminate our budget. We also uh, disseminate our budget on uh, social media such as uh, WhatsApp, Twitter, or Instagram. So based on uh, our experience on how people need the data, we set up the portal data. Uh, we already uh, launched our portal data. However, uh, there is still a lot of uh, thing to uh, make a betterment on this portal data. Usually we receive for, from people from GSO or NGO, uh, they want uh, to know the data of the budget. Based on this experience, usually uh, it's need seven days or more depend on the deep or the detail of the data they want. So we think that we must put all the data in open data format like GSV at a portal data APBN. So we just established it in 2006 and still in development in 2017. And recently uh, it's okay we have uh, one system to uh, query data. So in portal data, we have three type of uh, data. At first is data set. It's a look like a table of our uh, budget data. The second one is peta data. Peta anggaran is look like a map of budget and also a query data. In query data, people or NGO or whatever can short uh, the data of the budget expenditure like what they want. So uh, if they want to know uh, the, the expenditure for uh, health sector from 2010 until 2018, or uh, what uh, the expenditure of uh, for uh, education, they can uh, choose the right data on uh, query data. However, uh, the use of this uh, portal data, especially query data, still uh, not so good uh, because not not so many people know it. Even already we uh, promote this portal data when we go to campus, university, or to high school, or when we uh, have a meeting with econom or uh, lecturer. But the use of uh, this portal data, especially uh, query data, still low. We think that the lack of access in our region and also uh, less on information about this portal is the reason, the main reason why uh, most people do not know about this portal data. This is the example of uh, our uh, portal data. Uh, the top left is uh, the, the, the what's called the home page. It's like a data set. We can choose the data set. Uh, the top left is our budget map and uh, the bottom one is the, the query data. So they can choose whatever they want. However, we still have uh, difficulties and some obstacle on it. The first one is not everyone knows about the state budget. So we still uh, must have a massive dissemination about the budget. Usually people uh, dispute about central government budget or local government budget. They also do not know well about the structure of our budget. They don't know, they do not know about how we construct our budget. Like uh, we have uh, how much we must spend in our education, 
how much we must spend in health sector uh, do we have another uh, expenditure on uh, like uh, national disaster and etc and the second one is limited access of internet as you know we have a huge demography of indonesia not all area at indonesia has a good access on internet and the sec uh, the third one is that i think the, the most important this application this uh, query data system not too user friendly for example when we meet lecturer they already know about this portal data but when they uh, came into the query data how to operate how to uh, get the data as they want they still want to uh, know well uh, i mean they want to better ex explanation for us how uh, to operate this query data so i think uh, we we need to more uh, better system more better uh, operation on query data maybe we have also must make a manual on it so i think uh, presently this is how we disseminate our uh, budget our budget data to uh, people at indonesia this is uh, my uh, presentation thank you and uh, so well something that we can see here and and i think in in some way uh, anna also went through this uh, we were talking about the difficulties from state uh, budget, which is really big to the disaggregation and local governments. And sometimes that is easier for the users to grasp because it's smaller projects and are more tangible. And I see a, a similarity with the Russian experience that has focused a lot in regional participatory budgeting and local experiences that have been building up as well. Uh, one question for you, Wawan, and I am very interested in how this WhatsApp dissemination works. I've never heard about this kind of experience, so if you could share with us. Yes, uh, we have a WhatsApp uh, group with the NGO. We have a group on uh, open government uh, partnership uh, WhatsApp group. So sometimes uh, I just uh, make a uh, announcement about the uh, portal data about the uh, the content of uh, that budget data on uh, in our portal data so i think uh, i hope that uh, the the members of uh, this uh, we are group wh group was our group uh, they know about this portal uh, they know the content of this portal and they will uh, tell to other people uh, with not the, the member of this uh, WhatsApp group. That's uh, how we operate in WhatsApp group. And uh, I don't see uh, any questions from our participants yet. So I'm going to have make another question for both of you. Both of you mentioned having high school uh, budget literacy approaches. How does each country decide which con which contents are going into this budget literacy projects for high school? Did you decide unilaterally? Did you have this kind of council? Did, did you work with teachers? I don't know. Uh, can you share each of your experiences? Yes, I think I, I, I answer for the first time. Uh, we meet with the students and also the uh, teachers in a certain school. Uh, we disseminate about our structure of our budget, like uh, uh, our budget, our revenue come from taxation or non-tax, how we expand our money, how we uh, must finance our deficit, uh, the percentage of our debt, uh, ratio to the GDP and also uh, teach them uh, to obey uh, the taxation uh, to watch the uh, spending of our uh, local brands and etc. So I think uh, make a better uh, understanding about the budget structure, 
about the uh, taxation, uh, about the uh, expenditure, about the project is uh, quite important to uh, our uh, the high school students. And I think the the, the last time is we they they, they do, usually they don't know whether uh, let's say uh, this is the project of uh, the road betterment. This is belongs to a local government, which is a municipality of Rakensis, or province, or central government. <clears throat> so uh, we tell them that before they uh, make any opinion to a such project, they must know first which uh, area of this project. Is it local government? Is it a province project? Or is it a central government project. So I think if they have any opinion, if they have any uh, objection to this project, so they can speak uh, to the right uh, institution. I think that's uh, our uh, concentration. And from Russian experience, I can say that uh, we have a very big and uh, good um, joint project with uh, the World Bank. As it was a project of the World Bank, uh, we have a very good, we had a very good um, group of experts uh, in uh, budget literacy. And uh, we learned a lot uh, from the international experience of budget literacy. We have a special, even a special book on international, um, it's international, um, uh, experience on budget literacy and uh, but the final word uh, um, about content of uh, these books uh, was of course uh, under the ministry of finance well i think we still have some some uh, issues with uh, helping users achieve what they want know which uh, who to approach in cases they want to to have so, some incidents in the budget and Anna you mentioned some uh, public councils and hearings and you also mentioned the um, um, the urban projects that you have uh, managed can, can you share with us an experience on how these efforts for engagement have had an impact in any budget allocation, in any process from the ministry, how this has uh, had an effect inside of, of the Ministry of Finance? I can start with our experience and experience of uh, PMPAL countries. Uh, most of them um, have uh, special uh, public councils under the uh, government authorities. Um, and. Um, these uh, professionals and experts uh, who uh, can join um, these public councils, uh, they can um, revise um, the main documents of uh, the Ministry of Finance. Uh, for example, uh, in Russia, we have uh, such a public council, and um, these experts um, from the public council, uh, they can revise, uh, for example, state programs, projects of uh, state programs. Well, and uh, could you share with us uh, finally and, and before closing up uh, with this, I have so many questions from this. From, from the time that we were present at uh, the launch of your first budget transparency website, I see we, you have come a long way in publishing a lot of data. And yeah, can you share with us what uh, challenges have you faced in publishing these data, uh, technological problems or uh, decision problems or in, any challenges that you have faced in, in publishing this data? I think the most uh, challenging is uh, the number of the data. It's uh, thousands because usually we put uh, the detail of the data is until the spending unit. We have uh, more than uh, 10,000 spending units. Uh, one uh, spending unit has uh, maybe two programs and uh, several activities. So we, when, when we want to convert from our system to uh, the portal data, it's a, a neat uh, uh, long process. That's, that's uh, the, 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 the first challenges. The second one is uh, the data of our revenue. Usually, 
our 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 data revenue set is only for uh, a yearly, but recently we want to make it a monthly uh, data set on our revenue. However, we still uh, also need uh, the detail of our revenue for province and uh, local governments. That's a difficult one because in our system, for example, a tax session, uh, like uh, corporate tax session, the, we, 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 we deducted our, uh, we levy our taxes only the headquarter. For example, if uh, one big corporation, the headquarter is in our capital, in Jakarta, wherever they have an operation across the country. So the corporate tax just uh, come from the Jakarta. So I think it's difficult to us to know whether how much uh, this local government contribute for the taxation revenue for this uh, corporate. I think that's a uh, two difficulties in uh, our portal data to put uh, the data of our budget in expenditure sites or in our revenue side. For uh, decision making, I think it's, it's quite uh, enough no because our leader our minister has already know that once this uh, budget is uh, approved by parliament it's meant it must be open to the public that's all thank you well something that we have emphasized uh, lately and that we uh, believe that should be also in the focus and it's something that you just mentioned why one is the part of the revenue how a uh, in theory, this a uh, fiscal transparency would generate incentives also for uh, paying taxes, and for that, uh, yeah. the publish the correct publishing of the revenue side is also very important. And most of the times, out of focus on the discussions, it's a discussion that's just starting. What happens with the taxes, tax expenditures, and so forth. So. Well, it's an important discussion that we should uh, start and we should um, try and make fit with all this work that has been done around the budget as well and how to connect this information. What does it mean to the citizen? Uh, so I'm just going to leave you a, a couple more minutes to make any final annotations that you would like. Uh, thank you very much for being our presenters. I'm sure this is going to be very helpful. I see the people that are here and some of them are working on their own fiscal transparency initiatives. And so these initiatives that uh, both of your countries have, I'm sure are going to be very useful for them. So please, um, Anna, can, can you start with some final conclusions? I can say that um, this uh, raising uh, openness of budget uh, is, is still uh, very important uh, for Russia. And uh, we will continue uh, to implement all these instruments. Um, also, uh, we can um, learn uh, from other countries, uh, for example, temple countries like uh, Kyrgyz Republic or Croatia, uh, in uh, providing more information uh, of um, um, about budget and uh, use um, uh, the budget documents such as uh, citizen budget uh, in uh, parliamentary hearings and so on. So we have a lot of work uh, to do and we have a lot of plans in this field. Thank you. Marlon? Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I think uh, we still have a lot of area to make a better uh, portal data, like uh, whole uh, better operation, also uh, the data on our revenue. But also, thank you, Anna. Uh, I learned from your literacy of the budget for high school and uh, uh, university. I think uh, this is important for uh, the youngster, the young people to know about the budget. So when they already have a business or uh, they become uh, like a civil servant or whatever, they already have a better understanding about the budget. That's important to uh, our country. Thank you. So I have um, a comment from uh, Rosanna from Uruguay. 
And she's asking me to share how how with the team from the fiscal transparency portal they have advanced in some activities also in a budget literacy in an interactive um, show of uh, economics and finance which it's called bcu educa and she would also like to share i'm going to follow up on this rosanna thank you very much so that you can also share it with the community Maybe we can make a blog post on different initiatives of budget literacy because I think there are there are so many uh, going on, very very interesting. And I'm going to follow up in this, and I'm sure it's going to be very helpful for the community. Um, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Wawan. I'm going to um, stay in touch with you, please, um, Wawan. Hopefully, we can we can help you out in this. Uh, in, in bringing people to use the data and helping them out in understanding the data as well. We have some initiatives in that. So see you soon in the next webinar. And please send us any, any questions you have. My email is lorena at fiscaltransparency.net so that we can have more useful web webinars for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Wawan. Thank you for being so late. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.